Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. When it comes to this year's FIDE World Chess Championship, given what we know so far, there is no shadow of a doubt who's going to win it. Nepal must be gutted. Losing three games in a row must be a real shock. But whether you like or dislike Magnus, he's the one with all the real punches. There is no way he's losing this championship. Even when Nepa was ahead, and in some games he was, he not only was unable to capitalize, but in some weird way, Magnus came from behind and snatched some of these games right onto Nepal's nose. I have a very good feeling we shall not be seeing all 14 games. Remember, it's who gets there to seven and a half points first, and that will be it. I have basically covered every single championship game this year, irrespective of the outcome of these games. I've thoroughly enjoyed nearly every single one of them. You know, this one is far less interesting than what we saw two years ago. But at least two years ago, we got to see Fabi take it all the way to the very last game. This year, this is not happening. I will be travelling overseas on the 14th of December and I will not be able to cover the game that is scheduled on that day. That will be Tuesday coming and this is just in case Neville pulls also three rabbits out of his hat. Highly unlikely. Today's round 10 or 14 or possible 14 the day after the players will rest and then we shall see them come back to play the game of round 11. If Magnus wins or draws in today's game, well, do the maths. If he has already six points and needs seven and a half to win it all, then you don't need a brain to work out what needs to be done. And if anything, I guess Nepal will be playing more open and with less nerves. If this happens, then we might see him pull out a great performance. Let's see. Given Nepal has done better using the other side of the board, let's just hope he will be able to make a comeback. And if you are here for the first time, I have adopted a new format. The game comes in two parts. Part one is what you see here today. I shall then break the game at what I think looks to be a critical point. Then I will bring out the second part right after this game ends. I did this with the games of round 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And of course this one will be the sixth game using this format. Okie dokie, we have a start in Magnus going for 1e4. Just to let you know, this is the first time everyone is running late, and this is a first. I mean, the games had to start late. It was actually this move to e4 was already suggested by the first Saudi female race driver. e5 by Nepo. Knight of three, and it's another Petrov, which may be on the disappointing side. Magnus thinking here, maybe he wants to avoid what he did earlier, and he does. He takes on e5, the knight is attacked, and Magnus He's really taking his time once again. He's thinking of taking, well, is he thinking of taking f7? Because he tried this approach before. He doesn't. And he does not even go for the usual knight f3 either. He backs off the knight all right, but this is where he puts him. You know, this is a Martinovsky variation, which is a bit of a shocker of a move really. With Nepal getting 
rid of this central pawn. Magnus pins the knight. Nepo 2 covers in this way, which is the only way really. What Magnus does is to just come in with this response. Magnus has prepped this one way in advance. Actually, he's repeating a game he played earlier in an earlier world championship. He wants knight d5 to get to the queen, but of course you can't get to her in this way. There is always something like c6, whenever can develop and ignore this knight altogether. Okay, in the end, which in fact took Nepo one minute and 49 seconds, his intentions are crystal clear. He has not mind swapping the queens. It's a bit surprising to see this knight return to d3, but it's exactly the same game that was played with Farby in their championship game last time. This game repeats with queen e2, queen e7, and after knight f4, I think Magnus went knight c3. An interesting variation is knight c6. If the queen comes under fire, and this is without knight f6, this is what you might be looking at. If we take both queens off the board, you may also want to get the bishops to go to knight c3, and why not take, 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 and take, and this one would be a very easy way to draw. But I'm not sure this is what Nepal really wants. Coming back, Magnus puts a twist on this variation. He goes d4. Nepal develops his second knight, and with c3 to cover, this is how Nepal answers. Now, this move to c3 by Magnus cost him, you want to hear it? 19 and a half minutes. Does this signify something? There are many things to look out for at every single stage. Magnus, well, some people say he's not always very sharp with his openings, but if he's still number one and still dominates, if he was spot on with his own openings too, no one will be able to get anywhere close to him. It is my understanding we will be having another relatively short game. Rarely Petros move beyond the 40 mark, but there have been, as always, exceptions. Knight d2 by Magnus, just to get the knight going. And Nepal could be thinking of whether we should be getting rid of the queens. Nope, it's not to be. Nepal backs off the knight. Magnus here maneuvers his own knight into a three, and only now Nepal trades in the queens. With Magnus capturing in this way. Bishop d6 with the intention to castle. Magnus will probably do this first, and okay, he has just castled. Nepal has to copy, and he has just done this. And you know, though we have already seen two Petrovs, this third line of the Petrov is completely different to the first two ones. Though a number of moves have already been repeated from an earlier championship, I don't think anyone will be able to notice Two minutes later, Magnus has just gone for this bishop response to the third. So let's see what his intentions are. Rook e8 by Nepal. And he should be quite happy with his opening preparation. Like I said before, Nepal is more dangerous using the other side of the board. We might need to break the game, but I think we need a few more moves to unfold. Is h3 a possible motive to stop the axis to g4? Not at all, or not just yet. Magnus has just challenged the rook. Neville gladly accepts, and with a knight stepping in, it was Neville's turn to challenge the knight on f4. With Magnus trading, Neville's position is solid, but is he winning? This game now is open to all three results, 
well, three possible results. And though we are only on move 16, I think the next few moves will be extremely critical. So I'm going to stop the video here and I shall be back as soon as possible to finish off from this point. Now the question is, how should Magnus respond here? And as promised, I will be back.